<laughs> Welcome to the Dead Kings podcast. We are joined with someone I've been wanting to have in our stuff for such a long time. Hermano, compadre, brother in crime. <laughs> AJ, down at the bottom, Waluigi. Hey, how's it going? I'm from South Florida. I've done cosplaying, comp competitions, podcasting, and content creation, but I'm happy to be here for the first time. We are yeah. happy as heck to have you. So, a little bit of backstory is, AJ, how long have I known you? Since 2017, 16, 2000, I think. 2017. So, we were follow or like mutuals and stuff on instagram yeah. um, back in my deadpool days and um then there was one day i think i can't remember what forest and i were playing i think you guys were playing apex legends yeah i think we're playing apex and you joined the party and you like introduce yourself i was like oh i remember this guy um and i'm like i've been following you for some years <laughs> yeah and so then a friendship blossomed much literally brady's friendship over here hey listen here <laughs> anyway since then aj's been in countless videos with us he's gamed with me with brady still working oh on getting him God. out to utah i know that's, like, that's the next step i'm starting to travel more frequently as but you, utah is definitely the next step as you freaking should anyway <laughs> aj as you said he is a competition gaming a fighting game competition competitor yeah brain's not braining right now that's okay do you still consider yourself a cosplayer uh casual casual cosplayer and freaking friend yeah so i've been wanting let me go to my notes right quick i've been wanting to do this podcast subject for a very long time and i couldn't think of two better people to have in it my convention wife brady convention wife i can't as you <laughs> all know just haven't accepted it. <laughs> yes and someone who's actually 3d printed their own cosplay stuff oh yeah i literally got a mask on the side as a reference in Ex case of evidence exactly right there and we've all been in the game realistically the same same amount of time uh and i dating myself a little bit i've been in the cosplay game now for about 12 years we have realistically yeah. and there's been a lot of changes a lot of people who've came and gone and things that have gone up and down and all that other stuff and i kind of want to talk about it all because especially what i've noticed recent obviously recently is post covid rise of tiktok has changed how cosplay is forever mm -hmm. and that's what we're going to get into so i think what we'll do is when i ask the questions we'll go aj then brady then me okay um so aj yes when did you get into cosplay so the funny thing was i'd say 2016 17 okay i saw my i saw my mentor on facebook wearing john snow i'm like hey why the hell are you dressed like that and i was so confused i asked this i asked this with like sincerity he's like oh i'll be going to a convention i'm like is it still open he's like yeah so i signed up for like last minute and then i see taylor's uh wearing deadpool with a tank top i'm like there's a black guy wearing like a deadpool mask this is fucking cool <laughs> i can do that means i can do this too <laughs> so i literally just wear like some khaki shorts a black t-shirt <laughs> and a cheap deadpool mask on amazon and i was just having time of my life so to answer the question i'd say 2016 17 was my start 2016 okay and that kind of answers the first two questions of you know like like what when did you get into cosplay what got you into cosplay and what was your first cosplay so i guess the question is too what was your first convention supercon 2017 supercon okay all right and supercon i'm still not quite versed where where what city was that miami uh florida so where i used to live and where i currently live it's like an hour and a half to an hour away okay Okay. It's like the more south you are, the more city it is. Hell yeah. And when you went, what was what was it like going to your first convention? You know, it's very intimidating. Like you see people wearing fursuits or thousand dollars worth of armor, or you see people just wearing like Harley Quinn, 
crop tops, tank tops, bras, etc. Like, you just had certain bits of outfits that you may not know where it's from. It could be someone's OC. It was just very confusing at first. But mm. I was only there for two hours because my dad couldn't stay longer. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. But, yeah. Pretty much, we were just an artist alley even dipped. Really? Okay. Artist yeah. alley. Yeah. Okay. That was it. <laughs> So we'll we'll aim stuff towards Brady now. Brady, would you like to answer the question of when did you get into cosplay? What got you into cosplay? And you know, what was your first cosplay? Gosh, if you, if you remember all that. I don't. I'm so terrible with like that stuff. <laughs> um was it 2015 or 14 when we when we went to our first one? I want to say two th- no 15. Yeah, it was 15. 15. No. Okay. Was it and our first know. one, our first costume ever was was Daft Punk. I'm pretty right. sure. It, no, no, it you was we were, we were we were Deadpool's. Oh. Were we Deadpool's before Daft Punk's? I yes. swear we were Daft Punk's before Deadpool's. Yeah, so okay. I'm pretty cool. Hold I on. was Deadpool. You were in an army of two costume wearing my yellow smiley mask. Dang, was I? Wow, that's yeah, crazy. Let's go. That does go hard. Because after I, I'm answering this question for you, and I shouldn't be. God, <laughs> you, I, hey, I'm old. Okay, I've got the memory of an old man. Right. Um, and then but, we did we did Daft Punk, but I had Deadpool underneath my Daft Punk outfit. Because <laughs> that's awesome. I I hate to answer this for you, but anyway, continue, continue. <laughs> um, as far as what got me into cosplay, I want to say it was like you and me, and then a buddy of mine at the time, um, kind of pushed me into like it, and like I didn't know it was a thing. Like we all we all growing up, right? We're like when we would play games with our friends, we'd be like, oh, I'm so and so. Like for example, like Taylor, like you know very well, like uh, Transformers. If you were hanging out with your friends, you were like, oh, I'm Bumblebee. Well, I'm Optimus, and and you guys would like play fight and pretend that you were them, right? Yeah. But, me that was cosplay was just taking that to the next level to where it's like now i can dress up as like my favorite characters from video games or animes or stories or whatever that i want to and and go to a convention with like-minded people that like are going to be doing the same thing and so it instantly intrigued me because that's just what i was into like we were in the army of two stuff and and all that like stuff like the airsofting and all that so i think yeah do it for sure and what was it like going to your first convention, like like Comic Con? Dude, for me it was mind blowing because like, you know, you hear about it, you prep for it, and then when you're actually there and you see all the amazing people, and like you and I would like feed off of ideas from like seeing other people in their costumes, like oh man, like let's do something similar to that, but let's do this instead. Yeah, like it was just really cool, and like it was a really unique experience that kind of just like opened the opportunities up for what cosplaying could be and what it is mm-hmm. oh. thousand freaking percent um and to kind of like backpack off of that or piggyback off of that it's it was for me kind of same answers as brady when i got into cosplay so realistically i got into cosplay like 2012 2013 um i was it was i was going through a time in my life that was kind of dark and one day I was just watching Iron Man 2 and I was like, huh, that'd be cool to have a war machine costume or an Iron Man costume. And I was like looking online and and uh, uh, some maker, I can't even remember the name, this maker guy, he made this uh, fully foam Iron Man suit. And this is when foam was all the crazy like foam oh, yeah. was that next level shit. And when you would say, hey, I just made this all out of yoga mats, everyone's like, what? um now it's like that's such a hassle anyway yep. um <laughs> so i saw that i went on to some form i can't even remember but uh no it, it was that i saw a comment of someone saying hey i'm I'm making mine and then they they uh had mentioned that they were part of this forum i joined the forum i saw a guy who was making it long story short i ended up with a war machine costume um and so i like put that together got an iron man one and then me and a buddy a mutual buddy of mine and brady's we went around and did a couple um uh charity things uh oh wow as war machine and iron man but the first convention i went to was with this mutual friend but we never even went in 
What? Because so this was Salt Lake when it was still Salt Lake Comic Con. It, I think the first year Stan Lee was going, like a ton of people were going, and they actually sold out of the tickets. Oh, and so it had gotten to the point where people, which I didn't know, people were just walking in. What? Yeah, so that's crazy. I, yeah, I, so I was, wow. Yeah, so we could have just walked in the entire time, and like they, <laughs> like their security wasn't checking badges or anything like that. So. Uh, another mutual friend of mine and Brady's name, Steven, he had, he had went to the convention and he told me a couple days later, he's like, yeah, we just walked in. Like they didn't check us or anything. I was like, the hell? Then almost every year after that, I was going with Brady. Um, but to me, excuse me, I just burped right into the microphone. Um, to me, my first convention, which wasn't really a convention. It was cool. Like it was crazy. We walked like two blocks. We parked two blocks away, walked two blocks to get to the convention center in oh, wow. full full foam. Yeah. And it was just. That's already a hassle. Yeah. And so we got there and it was just fun even walking around the convention, um, just the outside of it. But actually going in, man, it was like you walk in and you hear everybody talking. You're seeing all these costumes as you're getting to the convention center, whatever convention you're at. And it's already hyping you up of what you're going to see when you get inside. And when I got inside, it was like just the breath got sucked out of me. I got yeah. like, holy shit, is this real? Is this, you know, this is like an amusement park without the rides and a bunch it's, of It's like in the movies. Exactly. Um, so yeah, that was it was somewhat overwhelming, but it was still good. Definitely isn't the same nowadays, but we'll we'll get to that. Um, so AJ, this will hit you first. Got it. What was it like for you, like pre COVID, pre Etsy, trying to get your hands on stuff? If there was like an anime cosplay or whatever you wanted to do before you started 3D printing stuff, like even like with your black mask cosplay and stuff like that. Oh my God. So we, Taylor and I both got our mask from the same supplier. Once I found out from him, use the discount code, obviously. And then go from there. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. I still can't believe I had to correct you this whole time about your discount code. I know. I... I'm like, you've had it for a while. I'm like, did you know this happened? Did you <laughs> That's know still... more about me than I do about myself. Oh, no. I These are some random things I just remember as we're talking. But I remember when my black mask helmet was $200. I waited over a month. Then mm-hmm. I thought they went to the wrong address. But it, went to... it actually went to my neighbor who brought to me the box. But it was just high quality resin. The magnets were kind of shoddy. Mm-hmm. but waiting for a month to get some supplies that seemed normal to me at least then mm-hmm. what got me into 3d printing was within 2000 and i'd say 18 19 was buying a hook from the game overwatch of roadhog and it was just about a good 50 bucks and i'm like oh did you get a hook from overwatch yeah roadhog's hook i got I a by the, i got assigned by the voice actor josh petersdorf oh nice and, and then the guy who voiced Toy Bjorn, which I thought would be really funny. But using a $50 gift card just to get something that felt really solid, cheap, I'm just like, I can make this myself. Mm-hmm. But pre-COVID, I'd say things were pretty easy. There wasn't much diversity, like just like A, B, C cosplays. Even on Amazon, like you see your generic mask and such. Mm-hmm. Or like those cheap spider suits, I'd say. Not to be rude for some people that can buy them, but... There weren't too many costumes. It was Halloween costumes. Yeah. There there was never a hashtag for cosplay, if mm. you noticed. Uh-huh. I could be wrong. 100%. Like, yes, yes, yes. Everything was Halloween related. And it was realistically, too, like when it was in season as well. Yes. It was. And you had to. This is. It's hard to jump in. No, you're it's, fine. Keep this is a, this is a podcast. It's it's when you it's when you had to like either dig for a website for like a Spidey suit, yes, or uh, it was just Amazon for you. Like you had to just it was one. There was no Etsy. There was no yeah. It, it, and then there's like co- there were cosplay websites or wig websites, but they weren't like explicit. Mm-hmm. And then there weren't like what do you call those drop shipping websites like Alibaba and Timu and such. 
those yes. are in existence. Yeah. So you couldn't you couldn't get it cheaper. You would have to buy. Hey, this is how much this cost. Or B, you would have to go to a Spirit of Halloween when it's discounted, or you would have to go to a Michael's, Hobby Lobby, wherever the hell you can find costuming. Yep. Even Joanne's Fabrics. <laughs> oh my gosh! Dude. There's a lot of diversity before it became a trend. Yes. Yes. And it it. Brady, would you like to, would you like to add to that? Like, what was it like for you? Like, yes, I know, please I, I know, I know, I know your main thing <laughs> that you've wanted to do for a long, 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 long time is your ODST. Yeah. So when you were just on your own time, away from the stuff we were doing, when you were scouring mm -hmm. for ODST stuff, how now? Obviously, people can just look up ODST kits on Etsy and have one within you know two weeks, right? Oh yeah. Oh, easy, easy. What? <laughs> Please do tell us your experience. Oh my god, I remember when I was trying to look up like Halo costumes in general, whether it was like Master Chief, a Spartan, you know, kind of like or ODST, and to get the armor sets, you had to find the person. You had to find the someone who had already done it in foam or somebody who somehow made it in resin because at the time like plastic and resin like was this thing that was like only the wealthiest of wealthy, like even like when it comes uh, like Iron Man suits and stuff. Mm -hmm. Because like Taylor said, like back in the day, foam ruled, right? That was the cheapest, most uh, effective way for anybody to build costumes. If you wanted like the high quality resin stuff, that was like movie quality stuff at that point. So like, yeah, nobody was buying that in bulk. And so like you had to find like it, like digging and digging and digging to find armor and to find someone who could make it. And then a lot of the times back then, like if getting a commission was pretty freaking hard to get somebody to do a commission because oh, they had already put true. forth the time and the money oh, yep. into making a costume so to like find someone that could make the costume because i just didn't have the technical skills like they th when someone makes it you think oh this person has a grasp on it when literally the truth was is that these guys were figuring it out as on the go just like i would have been doing so to get a commission was damn near impossible mm -hmm. and like aj said like the only place you could find costumes was like halloween sites um, or if you like, like, I remember you and I, Taylor, sitting in front of a computer, deep diving the internet. And then you My would goodness. find that one site, which you weren't even sure if that site was legit or going to give you a virus on your computer. Yep. And like, oh, they God, would sell like the anime wigs or like, anime, like, like costumes. And like, looking back on it now, they weren't very high quality costumes, but like at the time that well, there wasn't much out there else to pick from exactly yeah oh, and yeah. I, there was a i'm oh, sorry to jump in but there's pepperuka files or those yes. files that you would have to cut and trace exactly how you yeah have to the patterns where you i didn't know that's what you guys were referring to but i just remember yeah that. Like, yeah i, I got like I, yeah i was so close to doing just trying to start my own iron man oh my god um and i like it was like when i had started you needed a certain printer to print stuff the right size yes yeah and then it came out like one sheet at a time and then you had oh, to like a regular printer with the files either just like that tracing mm -hmm. that, tracing that it from the from the like cutting out the things and then tracing it from the paper onto the foam then cutting then out the foam, shape it shape it number it oh my know, god like whole, i i still don't understand so when i i did a couple costumes through this uh i think it's one or two i think it's really just realistically just one i did an injustice scorpion i remember um, this that was made completely out of foam. Um, oh, I could try to look it up, but I don't want to take too much time. Nice. Anyway, um, I did an Injustice Scorpion made completely out of foam by this company called uh, Real Awesome Works or Raw. And I'm not going to look it up. Whatever. <laughs> but he had made it completely out of foam. And this is kind of where I'm talking about like prices. Nowadays, that costume would at least cost you $1,000. Like yeah. it was full chest torso connected, uh, hood, shins, bracers, and then two foam swords. For all that, it, it cost me five hundred dollars. Oh my lord! Custom fit to me, custom size to me, straight foam, and you can tell he like had one of those heat forming, like those like heat soldering knives or soldering irons, soldering knife, soldering iron, like a heat scraper thing, even bobber uh, to form certain things. So he put a lot of work into it. I had to paint it, um, but he put a ton of work into it for that much. But finding him was like Brady said, we had to deep dive. Half my early twenties were spent just looking for people, dude. 
like yeah. <laughs> for for makers and commissions on top of that like i remember quote hopping for the longest time oh dude quote hopping quote hopping like so you'd go to one person to make it and they say hey what's your budget you'd say this is my budget they'd say okay well that realistically is just going to cover labor for the actual thing it's going to cost this and i'm like okay Real. out of my price range so i'll go to someone else go to someone else go to someone else and by the third person you're like i'm just not gonna do it dude it's like yep. you either give up or you just don't even do it exactly and there there was this so obviously we've all had um uh, uh spats with with makers and stuff like that but the thing that sucked for me is a lot of my stuff was overseas yep because it seemed like a lot of the 3d printing and the most advanced stuff hit everywhere before it hit the states that is true. So everyone else had stuff, and they're like, oh, well, it's going to be coming from the UK, or it's coming from, from like Thailand, or it's coming from Singapore, or whatever it may be coming from. And the biggest p- portion was hitting you with that, that, okay, well, it's like $70 for shipping. And you're like... <sighs> International shipping just sucks everywhere. You're like, I, I just don't want it anymore, man. <laughs> um, it sucks nowadays. Yes, it's still... It's even worse now. But <sighs> I guess so... The next thing is like when you were first cosplaying, mm-hmm. what were you primarily cosplaying for compared to what co- people cosplay for now? Honestly, mm-hmm. I wanted to get more like social because when someone graduates high school, I was a heavy introvert. I couldn't find any friends or talk to anyone, find relatability because anime wasn't a trend as well, mm-hmm. or getting to super movie, superhero. So Finding people with that niche or interest had to be done at conventions. And then you're like, hey, what's your socials? Where can I find you? Maybe we can hang out. Mm-hmm. And that's what progressed in 2019. But we're talking about the first con. I was never able to find anyone through Instagram, but I found people through other conventions afterwards, which was super funny. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, I remember you. You were at this one convention. And I never really used the name Waluigi back then, or AJ. I had some other dumb name. I forgot it already. Oh, God. <laughs> Way too long. But it just felt really nice. Like People recognize you from other conventions. I wanted mm-hmm. to do it to gain more social interactions, more friends, and actually have a reason to go out, get outside of my house. Yes. Yes. Oh, excuse me, Brady. What about you? When you when we were cosplaying, because I kind of I, I kind of want to let you tell our story and not have me like badgering everybody about it (laughs) but realistically like how many times in a year were you cosplaying and then like compared to like what you see now because i know you're not huge on tiktok or any of this stuff but compared to what you see now initially when we first started we were like 24 7 thinking of costumes to do like there were times where we had planned to do three or four costumes like we were like oh let's do one this day one this day and one the other day right and i think a big reason that at least i got into it and i think you and i are a lot on the same page is that we got into it because it took us into another world like it took us from the world that we know into a fantasy world where like you could see everybody almost like we were going into ready player one for real yes and i remember like initially at cons like everyone would take pictures with everybody like you would appreciate everybody's costume and like you know, like I remember like one of my other friends who would go and they would get pictures with everybody, whether they were a Jedi, you know, going against like um, Jake's magical adventure or whatever that show is. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, they were taking pictures of each other fighting, cho- like just whatever, just fun pictures. And like, I think that was what got me into it is like it kind of took me out of the real world, which is boring and put mm-hmm. me into a more fantasy fun filled world, you know, and and just allowed the creativity to flow from my mind at the time 100 percent. yeah i can respect that yeah yeah oh, and, yeah uh, sure. like so kind of the adding to that obviously uh like realistically like brady and i when we would actually be in cosplay it was like once to tw- to three times max in a year yeah like we would realistically full costume it was we would try on whatever we just finished then we would do a photo shoot and then it was at the convention and that was it. Mm-hmm. Um, now, yeah, like you said, like th- there was one time we did like two costumes per day for three days. 
Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. I think that I remember was... you talking about this a long time ago. Yeah, it was I I look back at early 2010s me and early convention me and I'm like you're a madman. You're an, you're a dickhead. Like, <laughs> putting my friends through that like my gosh. So it kind of it, it kind of morphed into uh well if we're going to do one or two costumes for the weekend, I want to make sure they're like cool and it stopped being serious obviously when we hit the pokey pools i think that was like my favorite time. yeah the pokey pools okay, were cool. that, that, that was a cool picture do you remember that seeing that shit shockingly yes it was I'm like where the fuck do you guys find the time to do this shit? well and that that was another thing is <laughs> that, like was my, the, that was my honest question i forgot to ask like getting the face shells and everything for that so realistically, the idea I I how I got that idea was I was kind of just scrolling through uh Deadpool pictures because I was like, ah, my armored Deadpool, I'm kind of getting sick of it. What else can I do? And um I was like, okay, let's go on Google scroll. Then I saw this guy in uh tactical gear, a Pikachu onesie, and then an army of two mask that was painted like Deadpool. And I'm Damn. like, okay, so let's just make it Deadpool Pokemon, Pokey Pools. And I remember, like, holy shit, how much did you, like, we were like, let's just be in onesies. But they realistically only had for mass production and really cheap Pikachu and uh, Charmander, which. Yeah, I for whatever freaking reason. <laughs> oh, my God. Dude, you want to be. And then I was Squirtle, bro. Squirtle's where it's at. And so, like, finding Squirtle and then finding <laughs> Bulbasaur was so freaking hard. And expensive. Like, and wasn't expen a, I don't even almost, remember how much what? they were. We, th those, your, uh, your onesie, I think it's up at my sister's house, but it's still around. The Bulbasaur <laughs> one and, the, and the, uh, the Squirtle one are still around. Oh dear! I I remember weren't yours your yours and David's almost upwards like two hundred dollars, something like that, dude. It was like stupid. And then I don't even remember how much. Did we pay like one fifty for the masks? I think so because we got yeah. like a, wow. we got like a we got like a bulk deal. Um, and then I MacGyvered the hell out of a bazooka. I'm sorry. I what? still have that. I that's still in the in the backyard right now. How Good. did you MacGyver it? If I may ask, PVC pipe, baby. The answer okay, to no. all things. <laughs> I want to pull okay, up a, that one. I want to pull it's up a on picture on Instagram, I think. Um, if you can look it up, just show it to the camera. Um That's hilarious. But uh, while he's looking up that, it was it was so much fun. It did suck. So when we went out to do our photo shoot down south, we did the stupid thing of trying to get there as er to beat the heat so you get there earlier as we should have started going later. Uh which makes no sense. So we got there and it was like noonish when we it's were actually hot. Yeah. And the hot glue that was holding the magnets into the face shells. Oh melted. no. The guy didn't use super glue to glue them. He used hot glue. So they our faces started melting. Um, I remember I made my own flamethrower, which was I'm extremely proud of because when Brady got his PVC <laughs> and stuff for his um for his Bazooka, Bazooka, I was like, I got my PVC for my... It, it was just really cool to make. But anyway, we get to the convention, and this is just, you know, bulldozing story, I'll tell. So we get to the we get to the convention, and uh, my butt flap zipper broke <laughs> on my onesie. <laughs> and what I wish I, like, because it was like, I'm like, oh, no man, I, I was like, oh, I wish I would have bought some, like, heart-printed... Um, like a heart printed swimsuit to be like, oh, it's underwear. How is a joke? But I had basketball shorts underneath, bro. <laughs> but still, that's and funny. That's I was pissed because I was like, dang it. No matter what I did, it kept falling down. So I'm like, whatever. It's a Deadpool thing. I'll just have my basketball shorts showing. <laughs> well, we're at this like break area and I'm standing there and this chick comes up, a, a convention staff member. And she's like, hey, do you not remember this? I don't. I don't remember this part at all. So it was Jay and Jamie that were right next to me for this. And she was like, hey, um, your costume's a little revealing. Can you close that up? <laughs> and I had basketball shorts underneath. And I'm like, what do you mean? And she's like, well, like, 
And so I'm like, it's I'm I'm wearing like Adidas basketball. I, this there's nothing revealing about this, but the fact that someone thought it was revealing means I was doing something right. So <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, can you, I was like, can you turn around and like look twenty feet to your left? There is a full on person in just like a freaking banana hammock wandering around. There are people. It wasn't in, me. It yes, wasn't it was. me. There are, there are people in bikinis and topless dudes and all i'm like what do you mean my costume's revealing anyway did you did you, did you find your picture yes i did let's see if it'll i don't know how well it's gonna show oh, oh that looks really good yeah, yeah so that that's brady and it, it came up with the h2o shit for his uh that is for funny. his bazooka which i'm surprised that didn't get freaking hit um right Gosh, that just looks so never get rid of that yeah. picture. Never get rid of it ever, dude. I can't, yeah. dude. It's sick and it sucks because it like framed. for whatever reason, we didn't take a lot of pictures that day. And I think it was because it was like super hot and we were like literally dying. Well, and we our and pictures. our face shell started to the glue was melting for the magnets. Because we had to re-glue them, that's right, before the con. And then we wow. had to re-glue them at the convention because they melted again. Right. Yep. That is the worst experience. Um, back when they had cosplay repair people walking around. Yes. Yeah. Oh my god. AJ knows. Them. He knows. AJ. I knows. still see them. They used to be mobile, but now they're in a random station, two floors up in a convention. <laughs> they don't even want to move anymore. <laughs> Their house is there. AJ's like, oh man, war, war never changed. No, I watched all the tragedies happen. Um. God, yeah, it was just like see memories like that. Like, obviously, getting older, priorities changing, life changing, whatever it may be. Um, but yeah, it was realistically like three times a year that we were cosplaying. And being someone who is on and off of TikTok, what I'll say, like, I was heavily so. Well, this goes into the rise of TikTok Ooh. and focus shifting to people just wanting likes and follows instead of friends and a community now. Yep. Um, Ooh, this is going to be a fun subject. Yes. So I'll kind of start this one off and roll it out to you guys. But what yeah. I feel, and not even just my own personal experience, but what I feel is that it's shifted now because to hit on something that Brady said a little earlier, that it didn't matter what you were cosplaying. Everybody wanted to, to intermingle, intermingle, intermingle yeah. oh, and yeah. take pictures. Um, and it again, it was like there was a time where I was walking around as I was walking, we, we were walking around as Daft Punk and we had Forrest's Deadpool with us. Like it really didn't matter unless you were like doing a group, how we did our arrow, arrow group. Mm -hmm. Um, but still, like it didn't matter who you were or what you were rolling with. And I feel like now, even, even if you're not wearing something relevant to whatever someone else is wearing, they just won't take pictures with you anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, think about it. Like, oh, yeah. Even even us, like when we did this last one, we didn't even ask people for pictures, which is kind of crazy. Like, because you and I are pretty like welcoming people as far as like, hey, if we see something cool, we want to get a picture. But like, yeah, I did in my last convention. Experience. Well, what I'll say, what I'll say to that is we weren't even dressed up. True. true. And I'm meaning like cosplayers to cosplayers. I mean, people who are. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fair, yeah. fair enough. Fair like enough. people who are dressed up like it's like back in the day, like uh, it was I me and i think jay we took pictures with a quidditch team and we were both spider-man oh yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. and you don't really see people doing anything like that people are are only hanging out with people within that fandom now oh, it's, not, yeah. it's, it's not everybody it's not everybody there are some folks but yeah like at this last convention like i, I didn't see anyone like the, the big thing was has been hotel this year um, yeah, it was. Holy shit. I have stories for that, but anyways. But, I, I, did, but anyway, <laughs> I I see people like plant mounting their phone somewhere and just dancing, not well, even it, enjoying the con. Elaborate, please. We'll get. Okay. We're getting into that. That's what we're getting. It. Thank you. Elaborate. Oh my god, I am so sorry. I didn't mean to go so far in, but no, so, we're in. We're in. I know we're locked into this one, but um, what I see people do is they find like certain random spots that aren't even where the convention scene is. Sometimes they'll have a friend, but they just keep their phone planted, start a timer. They just start dancing without any music. Like you'll just see people like throwing it back or doing some random movements or stanky throwing legs. Or, like it's just like, the fuck are you doing this for? That's like you're at a convention. You could have done this at home, <laughs> or you could have probably found like a private spot. 
but mm. it's more for public attention interaction or seeing that authenticity of a crowd of mm-hmm. crowdsourcing it's like oh hey, yeah this guy just jumped in while i was doing my dance at a convention i paid money for to not walk into and then they get pissed they're like oh yeah. my gosh someone keeps walking behind my shot and it's like bro oh, literally bro like that's that's my my biggest my biggest thing is when skull skull keeper and i were shooting our stuff we were shooting like a little uh collab montage at a convention and we were filming it outside of a panel area and people were walking through and they're like oh my gosh we're so sorry like no bro like we know where we are like we know what we're doing like it, it's like yeah you have like look, a uh, priority like, they have they have priority like priority in terms and conditions like if you're at a convention of course videos and photos are a thing like you just can't tell, tell someone hey back off his photo exactly unless like it's a group picture that it's something designated that's fair game like well, and there's what... a difference between like mutual respect like hey we're taking a group photo can you not like bomb it or you know whatever but at the end of the day if you're just going to stop drop dead in the middle of an aisle and start recording a video Exactly. You can't be angry that people are going to walk through it. And same with like a picture. Like if you're just doing a quick, Hey man, love your costume. Can I get a quick picture? You can't be mad if someone's going to photo bomb or someone's behind you oh, or, yeah. or whatever. Mm-hmm. Right. Like it's, you are at a convention and it's bound that to happen. people are walking around. Like it's going to happen. Exactly. And more and more, I see people getting pissed off. Now this isn't saying every single cosplayer is doing that because a lot of them are trying to involve a lot more people in the conventions right yeah but that also gets hit with no nah, i don't want to do it we're not part of your universe like not part of your universe we don't like you as a person or something like that because it could also be from what someone has done in the past exactly like for, there's for, a lot of there's a lot of things but there's a lot of layers behind that <laughs> exactly like for instance say a deku doesn't want to take a picture with a freaking pikachu like Oh, we're not the same thing. Da, da, da. Like that's the, like, what I'm seeing nowadays. Like that's silly. But I know, but yeah, the it, it it is that thing. Like the right to me, the focus shifting on like wanting clout and likes and all that stuff. And I'll be the first to say, like when my ghost took the heck off. To me, it wasn't like oh, I'm I finally getting. I, I'm finally not. I'm finally getting the the recognition I deserve. I was like, this is actually kind of overwhelming. Yeah, but it's cool. People are liking this new style of content because for the longest time on TikTok, I was just doing Boba Fett. Um, oh yeah, I was watching every day. I'm like, like, oh shit, this goes hard. Like, <laughs> like what <laughs> other weird thing is Taylor doing now? And then um, I read the comments, and I'm just like, weird. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> because there's just some people without filters, and there are some it, people that just don't know how to like have social interactions, and they just say these awkward things, thinking it's normal. Well, this is the, uh, uh, um, you should see the unfiltered comments that I got. Because I I had to put a sensor on some of my stuff that they go to like this other folder that they have to be (laughs) approved. And I've seen, and they are bad. Um, Oh, Lord. (laughs) But that then too kind of comes to the thing. And yes, this, I I think, and AJ can speak, and I guess the both of you can speak to this effect because you're more anime fans than I am. But within the anime community, there are, forever with cosplay there's been weirdos oh at, for at, sure at 100 and, and shit like there's there are weirdos yes i have like florida like even our own state has weirdos in designated areas well it's florida florida that's it, true it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, florida yeah, man you got a point, so you got a point. <laughs> <laughs> but i'm talking about there was one guy who got like really canceled so bad like less than two weeks ago for what oh whole wheat pete oh god Dude, I that, don't even uh, I don't even need to finish that. <laughs> oh God! So I Brady, a... would you like to know? So, no, hold... no. Actually, I so, do, I don't know if I want to know that. So, at hold all. on. Let me let me let me kind of preface this and, and and jump in. Do you remember D Pity? That Deadpool that I like looked up to that went to a ton of conventions. I looked up to him too, which is more fucked up. Yeah. So he got canceled, and so did this other guy named Whole Wheat Pete. They made very distasteful jokes about the Diddy situation. Agreed. Um, oh, we're shit. not going to dive into it, but it was. Oh no, that's another layer. Yeah, we're not going to dive into that, but that type of thing that I'm saying is like people see these memes and shit online, and they're like, oh, "I'm just going to go do it in person." Now, Literally. I'm not saying it's okay because you're saying it just online, and not doing it in person. I'm saying that the reality is it's a lot easier for people to move on and just ignore when it's yeah 
on just you're just saying something stupid online you'll still get flack and you'll get you'll get elbow checked but when you're putting it in people's faces right there right in front of them that have suffered from in what person, a lot of these at a convention what, yeah that what these people are making fun of at a place that's supposed to be a safe space for people it's, it's it feels unsafe now exactly and you're an idiot and the same guy literally dressed up as Zenitsu from Demon Slayer. Like, oh, the character's boo. gimmick is if he sees a girl, he starts running after him and starts throwing himself in and only to hit damaged property and such. Dude, don't even get me started on on the sexualization of, like, characters in anime and stuff and, like, the oh my God, that's... in anime shows. Like, oh, they're funny about the in the show. They're, but like, funny in the show sometimes, but they get annoying. Like, I've talked to Taylor in Lynx about this, like how certain characters in animes will be sexualized. And like, if you look up the ages of some of these characters, like it's legal in Japan, they're in their in the early US. teens. Like the characters of demon slayer are like 13 to 15 in the first yeah. season. And people are sexualizing them in their, both in their costumes and on TikTok yeah. and at conventions. Like just because it's just like the Deadpool situation, Taylor, like you remember at cons, like Deadpool's got in trouble because they took things too far with like females and stuff like that being yeah. Deadpool, thinking that they, they mimicked, can do whatever they, they want. They that's the character. And that's the same thing with like what AJ is saying of like Zenetsu. They take, they, they do it on purpose. Oh, hell they yeah. take these costumes knowing that they're like, Hey, I can do this and get away with it. And because that's how the character is. Oops. That's how, sorry. That's just how the character is. No, and that's not an excuse. Exactly. It, it, yeah. That's that's the the thing to me too. That's like because I only recently started watching Demon Slayer, and I remember uh, Brady and I were driving to the convention, and he was kind of giving me the rundown about certain characters, and then, um, oh, that's good. That's he, a rough he told fact. he told me about um about uh, what the feck is her name? Uh, Nazuko. N N Nazuko. That's, okay. Yeah. The, yeah. The little yeah. sister. Yeah. And I, within like five seconds of being in the convention, there was like a giant poster of her with like grown female parts popping out of clothing. And I'm like, you're, you're sitting here telling me this girl's 13 and 14. They're actual adult humans just drawing this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's so, another layer. That's like, <laughs> I'm not going to pretend like I've been blind to the anime stuff because like anime is like at an all time high now. Oh, oh like, yeah. Back in the day, I, again, you know, like I'm dating myself, but it's like, like even cosplaying Deadpool when Deadpool wasn't popular, popular, and you guys being in anime when anime wasn't popular. The sad oh, thing bullied. is, is the thing that makes that has made it very popular with a lot of people is doing that with people and and characters, and that's the sad thing is people who've never been to conventions nowadays they think just because they see it online they can do it in person. One hundred percent. And do stupid shit. Like, yes, there are countless cases of Deadpool people being weird. Countless cases of photographers being weird. But mm -hmm. the saddest part is we live in a day and age where all of this, every single recording, screenshots, yeah. everything. But people still do this stuff. Yeah, they don't care. Like, it blows my mind. And I feel like if it's not them living out their own weird perverted fantasy, it's that they're doing it for views and likes and follows on TikTok. Attention. Exactly. And I remember again, back in the day when tick like cosplay was more so for, Hey, look at what I make. Look like you were posting shit. You were proud of, you were doing yeah. it for legitimate fun. You mm -hmm. were going out with your friends and just having a group day, meeting friends and, realistically the out-of-state friends you you wouldn't see until you another convention just hanging out with them like we were doing with yeah. forte um <clears throat> not about me. forte that's crazy yeah so um then and then and then like now it's that like too like there are these people who don't even attend conventions like irl streamers and shit and i'm not going to go down that rabbit hole that's but, another layer afterwards yeah IRL streamers and people who are just going to conventions to just pick on cosplayers. And like, there was one recently where there's this, this guy and he was going around trying to interview cosplayers and they're like, Hey, we just don't want an interview right now. We don't want to be on camera right now. And they're like, this is actually crazy. Blah, 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 blah. Like just trying to get a rise out of them for social media clicks. And I'm like, what has happened? Why is everything that happens at a convention like I'm I'm gonna take a shot at 
the Call of Duty people, because I can. When we were at the convention, there was, and I, I think I said this to you, Brady, but there was a girl who went and took a picture with a ghost cosplayer. We mm-hmm. were at a we were at a booth oh, no. and you were looking at something, but I was kind of like, I could I could there was a disturbance in the force. I was watching the ghost cosplayer, and he like was he took the picture. He's like, hey, you want another picture? She's like, no, that's okay. And um, oh lord. And he was like, okay, cool, thanks you so much. And so he walked off. She turns around and says like the most. I'm not going to repeat it on on here but says the most raunchiest thing you have ever freaking heard. Uh, the, most, the most out of pocket, like the most TikTok of TikTok comment things. She says it the second he turns his back. And I'm like, sure, okay, she didn't say it to him, but still going to a convention with, with, those, that, thoughts and that with those thoughts and that intentions and those per- for getting a picture for that purpose. Ain't no way. Is extremely concerning to me. That is is, extre- is extremely concerning to me. Um, so we're gonna move to um, with conventions coming back and more people reselling like spirit Halloween crap, mm. less people meeting for friends just for like content meetups and collabs, um, and to make more content for more likes and clicks. It's a loop. Yes. So. How do you? I don't. What was the last convention you went to, AJ? Supercon 2024. Supercon 2024. So when yeah. you were when you were in Artist Alley, because Brady and I had seen this, did you notice an increase of AI artist stuff? Two people, two uh, groups got kicked out actually for selling AR AI products without mentioning it until last second. Good job to that convention, I was, I've dude. never been so happy. I didn't buy anything from Artist Alley yet because I felt suspicious. I'm like, I can't tell what's AI or not, but until I see a pen and paper nearby somebody where they're actually designing mm-hmm. or they have a shit ton of their product nearby, or you just have to pay attention to small details because looking at AI, you can tell the it could either be really obvious or really sleek. Yes. Like telling from hand motions, multiple fingers, a really wide neck, placement of body parts, and so forth, but... The fact that multiple people called out two alleys or artist booths, props. Exactly. I wouldn't have been able to tell. Good shit, dude. Good shit. Well, That's and, just... and it's hard because, like, in my opinion, like, at least for me and Taylor, I used to, I've taken art class, all that stuff, but it's been years. I'm telling you right now, with all integrity and honesty, I don't think I could tell the difference between, like, yeah. some of it, we could not absolutely tell the difference unless it was oh. blatantly obvious. And that's my biggest freaking issue. And this is where Taylor and I started to pick up on it. We were walking around the convention and we would go to the four different, completely separate booths, not same people. And they would have their Instagrams and you would see the exact identical picture that another Ooh. artist had, had. And you're like, wait a minute. There's Something's no off. way. Like, I'm sorry. Like wherever you get your references from as an artist, there's no way in a trillion years that you're going to get in one convention in Salt Lake City the same two artists that draw the exact same picture at four different That's booths. nuts. At was, least change the prompt. It was the same picture of Boba Fett. Huh? Yep. Mm-hmm. It was so the same. They, they both chose the same artwork with the same prompt. That is fucked up. Exactly. And I'm like, well, they're language. stealing somebody else's artwork. Yeah. Too. they're thinking, and, and that's the sad thing is like, that's the norm now is that people are doing that where they're just ripping off other people's stuff and and reselling it like the other thing too that pisses me off is that the uh the whole let's buy a thousand things from timu or wish or whatever oh drop drop shipping exactly like remember those laser cut um uh uh, uh, wallets that we saw yep or those staffs that people have or well, and it's in right, the, the collapsible steps. That the axe, that axe yes. we're looking for. Rita, Rita oh. from Seven Deadly Sins. Same thing, AJ. Same thing. We went to wow. literally. I went to six booths at least for a Rita. I was looking for just a, a a resin Rita, right? I think I found one booth with a resin Rita, but we went to six, maybe even seven booths to look for one, and they were metal Jesus. ones that were legitimately. We were trying to sell for five hundred dollars. Not yeah, happening. Overpriced. Not happening. And oh. you're like, they're just buying it in bulk, like, and they're cheap products 
like from Timu Dude. or Wish or whatever. That's something and I never brought up. Them, yeah, they're buying them for like pennies on the dollar God. and selling them for you know. Oh my God, Brady, triple you made that, me realize. quadruple that, and I'm like, that is that is not con. You used to see like, yeah, oh, that's con artists and conventions. That. Hold on, the, <laughs> it, but that's what cons become. That, yeah, it's it's literally it's become been going the con artist convention. Uh, 2000s. Like you see people with the same Kingdom Hearts keychains, Destiny guns, those generic foam pieces that aren't that are just made somewhere else, and they're like, yeah, we can get maybe a hundred for maybe a few, just like a couple like bucks, and then let's just charge everyone 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Mm -hmm. and they're yeah. just like, hey, this is real. Oh, eva foam they won't tell you where it's made but you could go on to you. etsy and buy the same thing i i looked on etsy there's really oh, yeah. that are cheaper than 500 dollars for a full metal one. oh i made mine 3d printed and it took me a week for less yeah. than 30 dollars yeah and i'm like you, you you're out of your mind so we have ai artists we have timu sellers and that's like half your convention like, to be no fair, joke, the dropshippers have been there for a long time. Let's be fair on that. Well, one. so they ha they have been, but they're getting worse because okay. it's real. It used to be for me at least. It was one or two of those dropshipping booths. That's what it was. There oh, was yeah. like seven booths there. There was one booth that was straight up selling um, stuff from Spirit. Like you know the smell you get when you walk into a Spirit of cheap latex. Yep. Yes, that's what it was, and I was like, this is yeah. just. Holy shush. Like, I had never seen this at a convention before. I, Granted, I'm not well traveled in conventions. I've been to quite a few. But yeah, I've been to, like, I mean, like, out of state. Like, I've been to, I've been to, like, three anime conventions. I've been to almost every fan X. MegaCon was here. the biggest one I went to. And I, I know that feeling. Like, yeah. I know so, that scent. Yeah, exactly. So we, we got there and we're like, what the heck? Like, you're like, and so I was, it was, wasn't until after the convention, I believe, where I was like, you should have tried to swindle them, Brady. You should have been like, oh, well, this booth over here has a Rita and they're selling <laughs> it for $200. What can you do for me? But you yeah. know, they're all linked together. Yeah. yeah. You knew, you know, that they were just going to text each other. Or, and, and you know what? There's one other thing other than the Timu sellers, the AI artists, you also had the, um, the, 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 the wish boxes, the secret boxes, like oh, those mystery boxes. Talking, yeah the mystery boxes Fuck and it's that. like that used to be like one or two booths and then yes. the rest of the booths were like you know dude, genuine artists lightsaber dude. companies and, they're and it's like dude the, it's insane dude. it is insane that it is like it's gotten to the point where now if you go to a convention you're just buying factory shit that you could buy online like you're oh, better off yes. going online and yeah. just buying it yourself than buying it in conventions and what breaks my heart the most is so many people bypass, like as you can see down here on either one of either side of these of this little background. We have the convention floor here, but the authors, the actual a the actual artist people, like with Brady, I, I talked to him about this on the phone. Forever and a year ago, he bought a handmade Pip Boy from yeah. Fallout. Yep. And Get out of like soccer shins or something. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't like screen accurate, but it was still dope that someone locally yeah, made, made this themselves. Like and you don't see that anymore because like it's it's I, I I now I'm not gonna pretend to know how much it costs to put up a booth for yourself, but it's just sad that like I have mutuals and actual legitimate IRL friends who um are artists and they're getting kicked out or overlooked because of the AI artists or the drop shippers and all this other shit. Yeah. But it, the thing that gets me to, and we're kind of moving to another se uh, section is what was the last convention you went to where they had a pro cosplayer section? Dude, the last time I was with you I and I, save, I save them all the time in conventions. Like I wouldn't say pro cosplayers to say, I would say like you'd have really well known people, like that one chick that cosplays in Australia that does like really good like game, that does a lot of gaming content. I forgot her name. I'm gonna look it up. Yaliz. Oh, Yaliz. 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 I met her in person a few years ago. But then you have like local cosplayers. Like, hey, this guy's been cosplaying for a few years. He does good work, and it might not be good work, or it could be some kind of work. But he's just been there for some time and enjoys the scene, and they call him guest. So, my question, I guess, is that is the convention promoting this person and bringing them in, 
Or are they setting I, themselves up? Or are they setting themselves up? I think it's a bit of both. Like, there's one guy I know that's a true professional cosplayer who does Gundam stuff. Like, yes. he gets invited to this thing. His name is Uber Cosplay. Shouts out to him. He's a South Florida native that does Gundam cosplays. Mm -hmm. Like, he's been doing it since early 2000s, building armor brick by brick and go to these high level cosplay com competitions. I think I've seen him. Yeah, he's very iconic. He is, like, I, I, think, I think you've sent me some of his stuff. Yes, because he is that cool of a person. Like he is a down to heart human, has two cute dogs, cares about the Gundam scene a lot. Like that's the type of person I would say promote. Like someone that can show the scene off and show that there's other niches besides your anime, your anime superhero tropes. Yeah. Even well, and that like, like to answer your question as far as like I can remember too. The last time I remember, I think it was like maybe even Jessica Negri was there at. Salt oh, Lake. I forgot like about that. her. Like, like someone like that, like I haven't really even seen. And like, I don't, there was maybe one person that we saw at this last con that was like a famous cosplayer that we know of. And I feel like that's just like really died. Like it has, Comic-Con has essentially become like, hey, come to this flea market, but come dressed up. Yes. It's yeah. Halloween and, point two. And two realistically, point like, I guess maybe I'm, I guess my biggest gripe is maybe I'm just talking about our convention in general, but for what I've seen online too, is when it comes to the cosplayers, like that's what I mean, like the rise of TikTok is you don't have to become a published model anymore to become a, You're just a normal dude, a, a professional cosplayer anymore, right? Like it was very, it was something that you had to work towards and know people within the industry and all this other stuff to be invited to conventions and stuff. And now you have three, four, five viral videos and people are like, yo, let's put you up. Let's start doing photo shoots. Let's start doing this. Let's fly you after this. But on the flip side of that, at least for our convention, years ago when I met Monica Lee, they thought about her. Wow. Damn. Monica, they, Lee, Monica Lee. She was one of Jessica Negri's friends. Okay. Um, it was like her, Jessica, Yaya Han, Nicole Marie, Jean, Leanna Vamp, um, Kristen Huey, all these chicks, right? That were constantly getting invited to conventions. And I don't even really see, like I don't follow them much anymore because like I've kind of moved away from the bright eyed, bushy tailed oh, cosplay chicks being, you know, young boy, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but the thing is, is at least here too, like over the past couple of years, they don't even bring local cosplayers anymore or promote those lo local cosplayers. And if they do bring them, they're like, hey, it's on your diamond. We're pushing you way in the back between oh, wow. between two figure booths that have nothing to do with what you're even doing. And their booths are bigger than yours. Holy mackerel. And so it's, I know like there's still the convention costume contest and all this other stuff. I don't get into that. I don't, there, um, there's always bound to be that. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't compete. I don't judge. I don't, nothing, none of that. Right. Never have I. Never have we said at all in this video that someone's level of cosplay should dictate how much clout they have or how valid their stuff no. is. That's, that's not the case ever. No. My issue is that. There's two things killing air quotes cosplay, right? Or this just hurting the community and it's cosplayers themselves oh, and yeah. conventions that are choosing. Obviously they have to money over memories realistically, yeah. right? And it, it comes They're down choosing money over a genuine experience, a genuine experience, right? Over, you know, people just having a great time now. Yes, I know that like you bringing celebrities and there's a bunch of different people you have to appease to in a convention for a convention, right? Um, but even to like this year, like the amount of cosplayers, cosplayers has kind of gone down, at least at our convention. Mm -hmm. Like there were people who were doing like Astarians and Shadow Hearts and and whatnot. Like there were people still going all out, but yeah. what you see on the convention floor in our background right now. That was realistically it. Yeah, people just being average Joes and stuff. Yeah, coming to get their collectibles, which is fine. That's what I was doing there. That's um, but it's I wish conventions would make more of an effort to keep the spirit of cosplay alive. You know what I mean? Like, let's bring like it. That's what inspired me to go to conventions is when they have the pro cosplayers there. But yes, like I just said, pro cos cosplayers are kind of dying off. Um, 
and it's just influencers now. It's no longer pro cosplayers. Um, I guess the next thing I was going to say is the gatekeeping and the drama. But that's kind of, I don't know, something that's like everywhere. It's, it's a very broad questioning. I'm like, there are some people yeah. that just do their own content. There's NPC live streamers. Well, I feel like even if you look at anime, right? You look yes. at anime, obviously, like, you guys have been in the game for a long time. But your guys' narrative is the narrative that should be there. That it's like, with how popular it is, let's bring in more people. Oh, yeah. As with how it's getting more popular, the thing, I'm not talking about anime in general, but I'm talking about like cosplay yeah. and pop culture in general is like with it becoming more famous and popular, more oh, people are, yeah. are protective of the thing that they like. Like they're more like, no, you can't like this because you've not, you haven't liked it as long as I have. Like with yep. Ghost in, in Call of Duty, like Ghost is the Boba Fett of Call of Duty. That is true. With this new hype around Ghost. So many people are like, well, old old ghost is better. And you're not even a real fan of this and that. I've seen that with anime too. Getting into the, my hero, which is my own damn fault. But so sorry. I what's that, AJ? I am so sorry. <laughs> I don't I for so my hero for what it is, I like it. I yeah, thoroughly I, enjoy it. I have not dove into the fandom at all. Yeah. Um, but there are I've seen people who hate my hero for the fact that a lot of the fandom is overreacted they hate my hero because it's just stupid to them there are people that hate people who hate my hero there are people who hate my hero who who hate people who hate who, who like my hero yeah there that's a whole trope of everything related to what you just said but yes. if my hero to like i know some people that watched the manga how it ended or people before then or like when they cost shipping I love when people talk about shipping at a convention because it gets either chaotic or it's just disgusting. For those that don't know what shipping, it's characters that don't canonically match as a couple or have any romantic intentions have these fan-made fictions. Yep. Yeah, don't even get me started on that. I think that's I like, want to die. I think that's what started the whole TikTok trend. I'm with Taylor on it, though. Like, you get these people who are gatekeepers who, instead of, like, want to bring you into the fold, they want to keep you out of the fold because you weren't an original yeah. anime watcher, like, back in high school or middle school or whatever. Like, you've never read a manga or you only watch, like, especially this one. Taylor knows this one. Like, versus whether you watch the, the anime in Japanese or whether you watch it in English. Oh, and so up. Oh my gosh, like the, the fact that it matters That's that fun. much to people is is absolutely mind-blowing. And I can tell you now, like I'm going to look into the windows of y'all's souls. I have watched animes both in Japanese and dubbed. And I'm going to tell you right now, there's times where one is better than the other, but I'm not going to yeah. sit there and say one is ultimately better than the other. They are it's, both It's all equal. opinion. It's all based on like, like, I'm sorry, there's days where I like, I don't even care if it's like the dopest anime in the world and I do not want to miss an episode. I want to watch it right time now. I will wait for it to be dubbed because I do not want to read subtitles because me and Taylor being people who are like in you AJ too, you know, like there are things in movies and films, like let's just say ready player one, for example, where if you are not paying attention, you will miss the smallest detail that could be a hint for something that's coming in the future. And that's the same way in animes. And so, sorry, I don't want to listen to Japanese and be reading subtitles when I'm trying to pay attention to the little details in a, in a show. So, yeah. like, the whole gatekeeping of, oh, if you don't watch it in Japanese, you're not a real fan. Shut up, dude. Shut it, it's up. Just... Like, it's like 90% of those people who say that. Tell me the last time you stepped foot in Japan. Oh, and that you, the fact that you, <laughs> even, would, you don't even speak Japanese. Proof, Half of them are from Nebraska or Nebraska, Iowa. I like, can't. Don't, you're right. don't tell me that, like, or the closest you've ever been to Japan is Epcot. Like, like the world showcase. I feel yeah, called a out. AJ knows. <laughs> AJ knows. Or just to, just to your local Japanese sushi spot that isn't it's, even Japanese. Yeah, people who go out for boba and sushi and they're like, oh my god. Or just gosh. get Chinese food. <laughs> That's not even hey, related. Hey, hey Taylor, you've been getting boba since you know since high school. We've been getting well, yeah, boba yeah, since we, high school. So so I'm obviously cultured. we're we're the most cultured. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> like, but also this is coming from someone. As I go like this, like look, a huge Star Wars fan, right? Huge Star Wars fan. Tons of my content has been around Star Wars. But yes. for me, like, and this comes to, like, again, 
AJ for, was the, AJ was the first person that I ever knew that identified as an otaku, right? Yeah, I had that, to break like, that down. What? That I don't like, remember what that is. Weebs. Oh, the he same to, like, shit. He had to explain that to me. But I think AJ has the same mindset to, as me. But maybe I, I'm wrong. For me, if someone who's just like it's who's just getting into Star Wars wants to talk to me about it, I'm exhausted on it. But to the point of it's like if you want to talk, sure, I'll just be very tired about it. Instead of yeah. you can't talk to me about Boba Fett because you don't know the lore and you don't know yeah. this and what you're only thirsting. Like no, like I'll talk to you. It's something that I've. I'm exhausted on right now, so it, it but don't weird. mind opening up conversation. Exactly, and that's that's weird to me. Is because how many people have the gatekeepers are like, well, I was a social outcast. This 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 thing got me through hard times, and it's like, yeah, now you don't have to be alone with that thing. You can have, and then you can share people. it with somebody else going through a hard time. Like, and you, this matter. is your opportunity to be, quote unquote, the cool kid if you've watched it your entire life, where it's like, hey. Now you know, and now you're watching these people who have never watched it get into it. Hype them up. Talk about it. You have someone to talk about it with now. Why are you being be so fucking nice to people? <laughs> just, just, just be nice. Yeah. Don't it's not me. that hard. Or at least process the situation of what you're about to say. Oh, Some people God. don't know how to watch what they say still, unfortunately, even when it comes to the cosplay community or any type of community. Because they never exactly. got punched in the face. That too. That's true. That, that, That's that true. is also Yep, you got a good point there. <laughs> um, Sorry, like, but yeah, the gatekeeping and the drama—that's that again. That just that just sentence alone is cause for like a four-hour podcast. Oh, for uh, sure. the the last what I want to end on here is like I said, the culture has changed forever of cosplay and pop culture. Right? <laughs> there are very few movies nowadays that even come out that have nothing to do with superhero or anime shit. Right. Oh, nothing at all. Like your hacksaw ridges, your Mission Impossible's that could still be considered pop culture, I guess. The Fast movies, and Furious. Fast and Fast and Furious is gonna start fucking Jurassic Park soon. Good God. But your movies that have nothing to do with that stuff, like even like your freaking mafia movies and stuff like like murder mysteries, like knives. That like those movies now aren't even like they're they're movies everybody passes by because everyone's eyes. Are on the pop culture stuff and on Star Wars yeah. and an anime and Spidey Man and all that stuff. So the culture has changed forever, but has it changed for the better? No, you don't think so, already? No, I, I, I don't. I don't think so. I think that we have gotten so caught up, and and this is us sounding like, if I guess, if you want to say boomers, but we have gotten so caught up in the technology, the TikToks, the Instagram reels the the you know what have you of the modern technology M marvel and like all these other entities like film industries cannot come up with anything new name name the last time something wasn't a remake a reboot a uh, you know a sequel or some kind of you know where live it's just action exactly live action adaptation live action adaptation right so i think where things are at now it's it's not going for the better and and we've seen that because I think if we can all be honest with each other, cosplay is kind of dying. It's dying. It's not as popular as it as it was at the peak. And I think that a lot of these things are killing it because why go to a convention when I can dress up as something on Inst or on TikTok, do a few videos, get 10,000 likes, cool, I'm done. And especially if you're like, you know, like it's just hit, I think it's stealing the experience away as well as all the other things we've talked about. It's stealing that experience away from what con used to be, what cosplaying used to be, and just it, I I, th I don't think it's for the better by any means, mm -hmm. and I would debate that with anybody any day. So like yeah, I do respect that opinion. I think it's just extremely oversaturated to where it might be dying, because you can get a costume for cheaps from Timu, Alibaba, etc., or you can literally just find a generic person, be like, hey. This is me dressed up. I look this attractive. You can subscribe to my excellent XYZ link <laughs> or follow oh, me on XYZ. That's a whole other any rant. Names. I know. That's that's just a part of the layers. Like I that's why I personally think it's oversaturated. Because mm -hmm. you know how many people you can see in Spider-Man outfits doing doing really dumb shit? Well, and I agree. And Taylor, let's think about this. How many times have we gone to Etsy and how many different 
uh, companies or people make Star Wars armor and Star Wars pieces and in Halo stuff. I can go online right now into Etsy and I could find six or seven different magnums from Halo that are made by different people. And it's just 3D printed. It takes them like 30 minutes. So the oversaturation oh, yeah. piece. I 100% agree with that. Oh, yeah. Everything's oversaturated from props, costumes, masks, etc. That's why I get my files either free online or I will find, like, I will look at the best reviews for file making because 3D files or the artists that do it. I want to pay the artist, not someone who just copied and pasted from somebody. Yeah. Yep. Because if I wanted to commission a file, I would go to Fiverr or I would actually pay someone to do it for me mm -hmm. and not yep. use AI. And know how that works. that's, that's realistically where, where my take is. It's that for me, I realistically, in my opinion, is that if it's changed for the better, that's still in the hands of the people who hold it. Right. Um, I feel it's going one way though, because as Brady was saying, like the whole term brain rot is what I'm still foreign to, but oh yeah, it's, I feel like I a lot recently. of a lot of media now and a lot of stuff is brain rot, instant gratification, low attention span shit. This is coming yeah. from someone who's actually been diagnosed with ADHD, not someone who says they're ADHD for freaking trendy shit. Anyone who just says they have a mental illness without getting it profiled. It, it's not, it, it's diagnosed. It's not self diagnosed, and I'm running with it so I can play a victim card or Dude, be a cosplayer. Anyway, the low attention span shit, and, and, and that's, that's what everything is for people nowadays. So, whether or not it's changed for the better, I will say that is in the hands of first do i think it's it's changed for better distorted yeah you're just Great. super distorted hold on taylor yeah. Yeah. there we go there we go oh am i distorted yeah it, you got like was, super distorted there for, for a it, second it was for a second oh my bad oh probably because i started playing the music oh. um but anyway yeah I'll say, eh, it's, um, I'm, I'm 50, 50. I'm 50, 50, right? But people be good people to people. Don't be assholes and don't use something that you should be loving and putting it as a hobby and as your self-expression and don't fuck it. God. Anyway, <laughs> that, I love that. that, if I can figure out how we'll do it for this one my friends thank you so much aj thank you so much for joining us thank you guys for inviting me thank you so so much yeah it's good to definitely. see you man good to see you I'm, I'm definitely happy to be part of future episodes if anything pops up absolutely yeah. absolutely thank you guys see you on the next one